Hey guys, what's up? It's Benjamin Morgan here, and I am here to teach you guys how to use 3D audio in Blender. Uh, ever since, I think, 2.5, Blender has had a 3D audio feature where basically you can add in a speaker object, and that object will emit an audio file that um, will be heard by the camera, and the camera will use its position in 3D space, and uh, it will basically take the volume and pitch of that object, or of that audio. So, say the audio is very far away, um, it'll be low, and the pitch will be low, but if it's close up, it'll be, well, it will, it will be louder. But the cool thing is, if the object moves by the camera at a fast rate, say like a race car, you can get that effect where, it's called the Doppler effect, where the volume and the pitch will increase as it gets close to the camera, and then decrease as it um, gets farther away. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do that simple effect. So first we're just going to edit our cube to be a race car <laughs> of sorts. So we're going to scale it on the y-axis, SY, and tab, press A, and box select these two and grab it down. Simple. Now grab it on the, or scale it down actually, press control to get uniform scale, and grab it on the z-axis uh, until you have it roughly on the plane. It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, the cool thing is, if you guys wanted to figure out how to uh, have wheels move with this, I recently made a tutorial where if I were to move this race car, uh, wheels would move along with it. So you can uh, go check my channel for that tutorial. It's called uh, Rigging a Car to Rotate, or R Rigging a Car Wheel to Rotate Using uh, Drivers. So anyways, just a little plug. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to drag this cube over because we don't need it yet and we want it to start away from the camera. And next we're gonna add in a plane, shift A, add mesh plane, scale it up. Next we're gonna add our speaker object. So shift A, add speaker, and the rotation of the speaker doesn't really matter. Uh, and you see here, if we go to the speaker object data properties, we have an option to open up a sound file. I'm not sure if, um, it matters really what sound file you use. The file I'm using is M4A. I'm sure Wave or um, MP3 or uh, you know uh, AU3 I think is one. Um, I think those will all work. I'm not quite sure which ones work and which ones don't. But right now I'm using an M4A and it works fine. So we're opening opening up our file, and it's important to note that this file, if I were to go and play this file. Um, in this file, I do not change pitches. I am just doing this the entire time. Yes, I sound very silly, but uh, that's how it is. And that's just to show you that I'm not making this effect myself with the audio file. This is all in Blender. So basically, if we drag this over to our cube and grab it on the z-axis and rotate it on the x-axis a little bit just for a good measure, i just make it look good, basically. <laughs> um, uh, and I'm not sure if it would be effect if the audio would be affected if the object, if it was inside of the object or not. So that's why we're doing this. So grab it over there and shift select your cube and do control P to object. So now our cube, our, ob our speaker will follow the car. Select your speaker and we're gonna mess with a few options here. You'll hear that we have, uh, you'll see that we have volume, maximum volume, attenuation, which basically is how much the um, closeness of your object affects the sound. So if it's at one, the max volume when it's at this reference point will be one, but if you put it at like two, it's going to double the volume that it would normally be at this reference point, which brings us to this reference point. Right now, I think that's in Blender units. Um, so if it's one Blender unit away, it's going to be at its maximum volume. But the distance from here to here is more than one Blender unit. It's about 10. So if we select our speaker unit and set a reference to, I don't know, 10, uh, it will uh, make it so that when this cube eventually drives by, that will be the maximum point at which the audio is found. So we're going to have to animate this cube a little bit. So let's put our endpoint at 100 for this animation. Press I to insert a location keyframe, go to the end, and grab it on the y-axis, and press I to insert a location keyframe. 
So now if you scrub through, you'll see that we have our car whizzing by our camera. Okay, so now if we go look at our camera and we press play, it sounds like a robot. Uh, and that's because we don't have our speaker object selected. So make sure you have your speaker object selected and it should automatically play back inside of our animation. So that's pretty cool. One thing we can do is increase the pitch of me because I had a very uh, low model tone so that I would be able to get more of a higher pitch later. So if we press play, we could even do even higher than that. It kind of, kind of sounds like something you'd hear in Star Wars or something. Um, so that's cool. But maybe if we increase the attenuation a bit more, you'd understand what I was talking about before. So you can hear that it gets a lot louder, or you even you'd notice even more if we increase it to five. If you imagine the sound right now as a curve, the curve was sharper as it got closer to the camera. It went up sharper and it went down even sharper. So um, that's what attenuation does. That's what attenuation does. Um, okay, so now we have this all set up and say we wanna render our scene. I've actually never done a tutorial on rendering, so I guess this is a good introduction. Um, if we press render animation right now, we're only gonna get a series of PNG images. And that's not what we want. We want an, a video that will have audio encoding with it. So if we select H.264, which is what I usually uh, encode with because it gives low uh, file sizes and still good quality, um, we will have a movie format that will basically um, be able to hold audio. So if we go down here to encoding, you'll see that we have presets and it is actually storing, it has an audio file um, it has an audio channel that you can store audio on, and the audio that currently is in the Blender scene will be put into this channel automatically. So you don't really have to do anything. All you have to do is select H.264, and Blender will automatically render the audio um, for you. And of course, set the output to something that you will uh, be able to find later other than TMP. That's not a very good default output. Um, but yeah, you can change the bit rate. You can change the volume of it. The codec you can change. Um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned something. And if you want more tutorials, please subscribe and check back often. Thank you for watching.